Okay, let's get started with InDesign. And uh, you'll notice that when you open up InDesign, although you have the main toolbar clearly visible and um, your, um, some of your tools, you'll notice that there isn't automatically a page <coughs> or document that's been created. So we have to go up under File, sort of universal, kind of standard, um, File New. And in this case, we have a couple of choices. Um, we have New Document, and that's what we're going to pick. Uh, we'll come back to a few of these other things later. You have a book. And when you have a really large document, um, instead of doing it as one huge document, you often will do it in several smaller documents or sections. And that's what these books are all about because you can attach them together. <clears throat> the library is a great little um, place or palette where you can store often used graphic images, things like logos. Um, for clients and that sort of thing. Instead of having to go and find it every time um, you need it, you can put graphic images into this little library and then bring up that palette and simply drag them onto your document. So it's just a faster, more efficient way to do things. So we're going to say document, new document, command N. Always start learning your shortcuts as quickly as you can. <clears throat> we see the new document um, screen and let's take a look. Uh, the first thing is the number of pages. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in four and um, you can at any time and in the next video I'm going to look at a number of different ways and places where you can add new pages to your document. So this can be done at any time and uh, done on the fly. Facing pages. Um, this is a um, good thing to know about when you're um, looking at a document that you're designing and laying out you um, often want to see when you have uh, the two pages open just like when we're reading a book we want to see the pages side by side and uh, see how they relate to each other visually so we can turn that on or have that turned on and that's what we mean by facing pages and um, <clears throat> you can also turn it on and off on the fly if you decide you want to see just an individual um, page um, at a, one at a time as you're uh, working with your document as well. So I'll leave facing pages turned on. The next area is your page size and you've got um, in that little pull down menu here you've got a number of the standard ones letter, legal, tabloid, um, and you want to get to know uh, these things if you're going to be working on documents and know what the sizes are. You should know that off the top of your head. But here we can just pick letter size, which is what we're going to do. There are a couple of uh, European sizes. There's even um, compact disc size if you're laying out or designing a, um, a CD for somebody. <clears throat> so we'll pick the letter size, 8.5 by 11. You pick the orientation, whether you want the page vertically um, or horizontal. Okay. Then we have the number of columns, um, single column. Uh, but let's say uh, you're working on something like a newsletter. And, uh, you know, that might be set up in um, two or three columns. You can set that up here from the get-go. And, um, again, all of these things can be adjusted or changed uh, on the fly from the main menu at any time you know, when you're laying out your document. The other area, if you have more than one column, is the gutter or the area in between the columns. And that's called the gutter. And 1.667 is sort of the standard. It's about an eighth of an inch. Um, and so you can leave that. <clears throat> the margins. You always need to know, um, you know what the margins uh, need to be. Uh, especially if you're printing on a laser printer or an inkjet printer where there might be limitations. You know, a lot of times inkjet printers uh, don't print uh, on the, the half inch or so um, edge or border around the page. Um, laser printers will generally go at least to an eighth of an inch um, near the edge. Uh, but you need to know those kinds of things. So. Um, um, at any rate, once again, that can be adjusted. We're going to leave this here at a half inch, which is kind of a standard 
margin. Remember, this is just a guide um, for uh, helping us stay oriented and being consistent with where we're putting things on the page. So we'll say a half inch margin and we'll say OK. <clears throat> and here you can see we now have a page. And um, we also have, as you can see, our toolbar here. Okay. And um, while we're talking about that, um, in the very, it's very small, but right at the very, very, very top corner of the toolbar, right there near my cursor, you can see a couple of little arrows. And um, by clicking on those, you can change how your toolbar looks. You see, you can put it horizontally if you want it at the top or bottom of your uh, working area, or you can have it in two short columns side by side, or clicking it again will take it down to a single column. <clears throat> we can also um, uh, change how our working space looks, and that's something, uh, some of these little things that easily get forgotten and um, overlooked. Go up under Window, and you have Workspace, and you say you have your basic workspace. That means how the palettes are laid out and how things look on the screen. Um, you even have um, if you've got several people working on a machine, you can save a particular uh, view of how the tools and things are set up to the way you want. And um, when you come and sit at this machine, if, even if somebody else has changed how things look and behave, you can come here and pull up your Rick Rice uh, workspace and all the palettes and things will change to the way you save them. And that's uh, pretty cool.